Neutron's EQ module is a very capable EQ with a few extra bonus features. You have a total of 12 bands. These include peaking bands, bell curves, high and low shelves, and high and low cut filters. Most of the display is taken up with the graph, which superimposes the EQ curve on a spectrum analyzer. You can make the basic EQ settings right from there. Dragging a node up or down sets the gain, boost or cut. Dragging sideways adjusts the frequency. And dragging the small handle adjusts the Q, the bandwidth. I'll assume everyone's already familiar with those basic parametric EQ parameters. When a band is selected, a floating panel pops up, which contains editable readouts of all the values for that band, plus a helpful readout of the note value nearest to that band. There are a few convenience features when working in the display. Holding shift restricts dragging to one direction, horizontal or vertical, for more precise adjustments. Holding command lets you select and edit multiple bands together. And holding option and clicking on a node solos that band to help you get a better idea of the effect that band is having on the overall sound. You can also make these same settings numerically by double clicking in the floating panels. Double clicking on a node restores flat response. In each band's floating panel, you can also solo or bypass the band and select the type of EQ curve, bell curve, shelf, or filter, choosing from several options for each. For bell curves, there are three different responses. There's a standard bell curve and a band shelf, which provides a shape similar to a standard bell curve, but with a slightly more flattened top. This can sometimes be a little less peaky when applying larger amounts of boost. Proportional Q is another specific type of bell curve. With some EQs, you set a Q value, but as you increase or decrease gain, the curve maintains its shape and as a result affects a wider range of frequencies as you get further away from flat response. With a proportional Q, the bandwidth narrows as you increase or decrease gain, limiting its effect to the same range of frequencies at both smaller and larger gain settings. This allows for more precise control and can result in less interaction between bands, useful for corrective EQ applications, among other things. The high and low shelves also provide a selection of useful curves. The analog option is a standard shelving response. The Baxendall curves are modeled after the broad response curve of traditional bass and treble controls, like you'd find on a stereo. These can be used to dial up a more gentle tilt, especially if used together. The vintage curves introduce a positive or negative resonant peak or dip just before the chosen corner frequency. Like the vintage EQ in Ozone, this is based on the response of the Pultec EQ, a classic analog tube EQ which exhibited that kind of response. It lets you, for example, dial up a bass boost without adding too much boom, which will be ameliorated by the corresponding dip in response. Of course, you could work out the same curves with multiple bands, but this makes it easy to get that very useful response more quickly and easily with only a single band. For the high and low pass filters, besides cutoff frequency, you have a choice of several slopes, 6, 12, 24, and even 48 dB octave, plus an option for a flat or resonant filter response. In resonant mode, the Q handle sets the strength of the resonant peak. The display itself has a number of options for the frequency scale. Depending on the kind of EQing you're doing, broad tonal shifts versus surgical tweaks, the different scales can sometimes make it easier to see what you're doing. If you choose to, you can disable the real-time display in the Options tab. And there's an option for a soft saturation mode, which adds a little subtle analog character to the EQ. The bonus feature of this EQ is that it can be operated on a per-band basis as a dynamic EQ. Except for the filters, this option is accessed, independently for each band, via the triangle at the right in each floating panel. By default, the bands are all in static mode, like a normal EQ. If you enable dynamic mode, then that band will only kick in when the audio crosses a threshold, which you set just to the right. You can set it to compress or expand the gain setting you make by hand for that band, with the small arrows above and below each node. To operate a band as a dynamic EQ, you enable it and choose compress or expand, then you set a target amount of boost or cut for the band. Now, as the audio plays, that band will remain static until the audio approaches the threshold you set. As the audio approaches that threshold level, the band will begin to apply gain, negative or positive gain, depending on whether you've chosen compress or expand, respectively, reaching the target setting you dialed up when the signal has fully exceeded the threshold. Here's a quick example to illustrate its usefulness.
Let's say you had a stereo drum track and you wanted to mellow out a sharp snare without dulling down the appropriately bright kick too much. Applying a static cut at around 3K would fix the snare, but also excessively dull the kick unintentionally. But if you enable dynamic EQ for that band, set it to compress, and dial up suitable cut and threshold values, then the EQ will be applied only on the snare hits, leaving the kick and cymbals alone, for the most part, for a less heavy-handed effect. Finally, like the compressor, a band operating in dynamic EQ mode can be controlled via a sidechain signal. This can come from audio that falls within another band, or even from an external EQ elsewhere in the mix. You'd have to set up the routing with the DAW's sidechain options, but it does allow for some serious flexibility. You could set a dynamic EQ booster cut to kick in only when other notes play, or even when another instrument plays in a certain frequency range. This would especially make sense in conjunction with the EQ's masking meter feature. In fact, you may have noticed that I skipped over that button, the one labeled masking. I'm going to cover that separately later in the course, along with Neutron's other intelligent features. For now, I'll move on to the next processor, the compressor. 